I have managed to cut and stack the oak onto pallets. Unfortunately, I forgot to cover it before the snow fell. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I have a great deal more to cut to stove lengths. And since I'm using a chainsaw, I need to sharpen the chains. I have therefore purchased an electric sharpener from Buffalo Corp, made in China. This is the device. It's very inexpensive. And anybody doing professional wood cutting would buy a different one. This is for amateur, not professional wood cutting. Professional electric sharpeners cost a couple hundred dollars. This I got under 50. Let's see how it works. The first task in using this device is to anchor it something solid. Here I have anchored it to a block of wood so that I can carry it around with me. And this section out here needs to protrude so that the tightening nut can be accessed. There's gradations. You might be able to see that it says 30, 20, 10, 0, 10, 20, 30. You will notice on chainsaw blades, it says 30. So I'm going to mount this and notch it to 30 degrees using that arrow. There we go. So this device holds the blade in place along this channel. And this temporarily moves out of the way. And this, you can temporarily back it off, make sure it's nice and loose. As one can see, the chain sits flat on this holder. And this is supposed to clamp it by squeezing it. It is very likely that new owners will have to back off this screw and change the adjustment so that it actually holds the chain tightly. The, when purchased, this was too loose and the chain just slipped right through it and would not grab. So there is a spring just behind this screw and then there's a knurled plastic fitting and I will show you that. There's the screw with the spring. There's the knurl. And this is the handle. So you'll probably want to make this fairly snug by hand. By turning it clockwise. And then putting this back on with the handle to the left and then put the spring and screw back in. So here we have the chain is nice and loose and tap it down a little bit and tighten it with the clamp there and you have it nice and snug. Second thing is to use this stop to get behind the cutter each cutter will require the stop to be seated against by pulling it tightly against each tooth. And people are going to skip the next one and sharpen the second one, skip the next one, sharpen the third one. And then once one side is sharpened, this is loosened by the nut down below and swapped over to this side's 30 and then tightened. And then the other half of the chain gets tightened. So how do you adjust this stop 
so that the cutter wheel fits correctly. You can see the stop has to go forward on this one, so we will screw it forward some. And I'm going to put this one So that's pretty close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it down and then I'm going to start the engine after adjusting the stop. We want just enough depth so that the grinding wheel does not get deeply into the chain. There's a part there. You can see there's a gap between the chain and where the grinding wheel stops. You want the grinding wheel above the chain so that it's only exposing the cutter and not going into the chain itself. So this looks fairly decent. And I do fine adjustments by turning the device on. It's good to use two hands. I'm going to very lightly. You can see the stop is too far backwards because the blade is not being sharpened. So what one does is one uses two hands and very slowly tighten the stop so that it just barely brushes the grinding wheel. Pulling this taut downward and then tightening and then just make sure because I am refurbishing this chain it's trash I'm taking off a goodly amount on the blade normally it would be very lightly I've gone a little bit farther because I trashed the chain with a poor uh, sharpener. So, oh. we continue. It's easier with two hands, of course. We skip to the next one. We pull it taut. Make sure it's flat. And then flip. And do the next one. Like I mentioned, this chain was trashed with another sharpener, so I am refurbishing it by taking off more metal from each blade than I would normally use. And that's nice and sharp, so you might want to wear gloves.
etc. Another positive thing about that sharpener is it takes 50 watts. So if you have a vehicle with an inverter, you're good to go.